Welcome to another episode of GUI Challenges, where I build interfaces my way, and then I challenge you to do it your way. Because with our creative minds combined, we're going to find multiple ways to solve these interfaces and expand the diversity of our skills. And in today's GUI Challenge, we're building physics, or we're putting physics on stuff or something. Look at this rock hand, just rock out and bounce. Ooh, I hope you're excited about what's happening here. All right, all right, all right, all right. So what's happening, right? You're just like, why are these bouncing and so gooey? Like they're little pieces of jello that you hover on them and they jello out or whatever. Well, let's start with this. Here's the number 10. When I click it and I hold it, well, if I hold it, I'll kind of maximize out the value. Well, let's just do it. Okay, so here, look. Oh, did you see it kind of bounce over? Oh, look, it even went into a negative value there. So it's overextending, underextending. It's totally just some bouncy numbers. So it turns out that what I've done is I've written a little script that will take a number from to another number. In this case, it's going to 100. And then given a weight, you know, like a mass and some friction and some tension and some of these like physical properties of things in the real world, this function will take that number 10 up to number 100 over a range and kind of you know, apply basic physics to it. And so with that number, I'm able to assign it to whatever I want. And well, you know me, I'm going to put it on some custom properties. And so here's a good example of where we have letter spacing. Let's have some physics based letter spacing, shall we? Boy, yo, 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 yo. <laughs> I am very entertained by this. And notice how this one has very little friction, a lot of tension, and not a lot of weight. It's going to sit here and bounce for a while. Um, and that was cool. What I got to do is when I initialized the number set, when I initialized the set of physics, I defined the properties that uh, are of this particular physics and numbers I'm trying to do. Anyway, long story short, I get a value that takes much longer to resolve. And what's really cool about this too is I don't have to deal with duration. There is no concept of duration here. Duration is whenever it's done bouncing. And notice it's interruptible. I can interrupt these in the middle. In fact, if I interrupt them when they're like really far little, they kind of extremely go the other direction, which makes sense, right? Because there's a much wider range that the number has to span, that that number is going to span, and it's going to overextend based on the amount of distance it had to travel and all the tension and stuff I put on there. So this particular one, this increases the font size of what you hover on. It also increases the font size by half of the letter before it and the letter after it. And that's why it gives this kind of effect that there's sort of like, I don't know, that these are connected. And look at this one has the space. There's like a space right here getting animated. But gooey, gooey challenges. Yeah. Anyway, I thought that was fun. This one here is just animating scale. So we can kind of do a performant version of this where the custom property is just changing a scale value. And when I hold down, I scale it down to like 0.5. I don't remember what the value is. And when I let go, I scale it back to one. And that gives me this really natural looking feel of a bounce here. Look, it's really subtle. There's only a couple bounces on it. This one must weigh more. There's less tension. And I'm getting a much more subtle animation. And it appears to resolve in, I don't know, about a second or something like that. So if it's just a number and we can apply it to whatever we want, how about a gradient? Look, at I have a bouncy gradient. Bouncy, bouncy, bouncy. That one is a little flashy, so I'm not going to show that one too much. But it's just to show that you can animate, since it's just a number, anything. Right? How about border radius? Let's see a bouncy border radius. Wow, 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 wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is fun stuff. Look at this one. Okay, so this is another one with like low tension and it's a width animation. And look at the width on this thing, just kind of go. Looks a lot like the letter spacing, doesn't it? But that's applying a width animation. This element is centered and the width is being animated with this physics value and a custom property. Super cool. Here's a rotation example. Nice. This one looks really natural. I mean, this is the kind of bounce that you want when you're applying a, a sort of bouncy animation. It's not annoying. It's subtle. Well, I don't know if it's subtle. This one's kind of a little bit extreme. But what's cool is I can interrupt it, right? When you click again, you're sending a new value to, and my function will look at the current value of the number and says, OK, well, we're going from the current one to this new one. And when I hold it, I'm telling it to go to one turn. So that's one full 360 turn. When I let go, it goes back to 0. And if I just catch it anywhere in the middle, It'll resume wherever it was and go to the new location. And what's cool too about this particular um, implementation is it's contextual on distance, just like we were seeing earlier where um, here in this example, in the text, when I'm hovering over it and it's, um, and it's out, 
right? When it's in its natural state, it doesn't have to go that far to get to get to the large state. But if I catch it when it's shrinking, I can I can increase the amount of like force that it has because it has to travel over a greater distance, which means there's more tension and there's more bounce in it. So this particular um, function is is very distance relevant. So if you're going a small distance, you're going to get a different animation than if you go a long distance. And that's just really cool, I thought. OK, so here's another one. We've got these little balls. They'll bounce. These ones are kind of fun because, look, I can like pull them down just with my hover event. Hi-ya, 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 whoop-cha. I, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I, I'm just like hitting these things and they sit there and they bounce and it's really cool. Ooh, I almost got like a little sine wave there. Ooh, look at that. That's nice. Look at that, how that's settling. So again, those are using um, this particular function to write a translate Y value in custom properties and the custom properties um, just apply these over time, just like how we saw this number. So again, like when I click this number, just imagine this particular number is going into a custom property using request animation frame. And so the browser is like, oh, on, on the time when I'm ready to do some animation, I'm being given a new value of this particular number or this particular uh, letter spacing. And I'll just... Uh, apply that transformation and it applies the transformation at the fresh at the refresh rate that it has and you get a nice little animation okay what about this one this one when you click I shuffle the array of nodes and then give them a new translate position and then it takes that translate position and it goes to the new one with the applied physics and this one is a little bit more bouncy it's kind of fun there's more tension here you can see that like it almost feels like a, a stronger rubber band is on this one than is on this one here this one's in a looser rubber band and this one is a stronger rubber band you can kind of see the tension that's in there and you get this much faster animation and an animation that resolves a little bit faster um, but still has some good bounciness to it too so that brings us to the playground let me zoom out Ah, uh, so here's where we can kind of play with all of the attributes that go into this. So when you define one of these new physics numbers, you tell it what the mass is, you tell it what the tension amount is, the friction, and the start velocity. And these are the four factors that go into um, applying this animation. And so notice that these, these are all the default values of the function. The start velocity is at 0, the friction is at 10, the tension is at 100, and the mass is at 1. And what's cool is I can use this uh, little playground down here to kind of preview the values that are going on inside of there. And again, it's like interruptible, which is like fun. Um, and that's the default stuff that we get. And that's a, a pretty good amount of physics on there. It's you know bouncing back and forth about three or four times. It's resting nice and, and well. OK, well, let's let's play. You want to want to play a little bit and see what changing these values is. Let's up the mass to five. And look at that. It's like a heavier item and e the tension stayed the same. So there's still a good amount of tension, but it's heavier. So it goes slower, but it also kind of swings more, which is interesting. If we really bump up that mass, see, we kind of just exaggerate that exact behavior that we got. So the amount of tension that we have in here is pretty high. But notice how the mass is really affecting the ability for this to settle over time. Um, kind of cool. So let's go back down to 1. Let's increase, let's see. Yeah, we're back to original. Let's increase the tension. So if we increase the tension, ooh, look at that. It's like a stronger rubber band is on there. But since we dropped our mass down, this is like a lightweight item on a really strong, tense uh, rubber band. And we get this really strong rubber bandy effect. And look how much faster the animation happens. So you increase the tension and you increased the um, speed at which it goes. Well, let's also increase the friction. So we increased the tension and now we're going to increase the friction. That was weird at reset. Oh, whatever. And now look at this. We've increased the friction and there's way less bounce. In fact, there's like no bounce happening. That is really interesting. Let's drop it down to 28. Ah, there we go. So now we have a fast animation because we have a lot of tension. We have a decent amount of friction. And there it is, getting a nice swift physics-based animation. Super cool. OK, well, what if we drop that tension back down to like, what was the default? It was like 100. And look at our friction has drastically changed the amount of bounciness. In fact, there's no bounciness. It looks like we're even applying like an ease out or something like that. It starts out fast, and then it slows down. We can change this by adding a little bit of start velocity. And so now it's going to start even faster. It's going to assume that as soon as it begins, it's like it was already traveling. We didn't see much difference. Let's really bump that up. Oh, now we got to see some of our, our tension is there, right? We have tension. We have um, pretty low friction. 
And here we can see that it really overshoots because of that amount of start velocity. That's too strong. Let's drop it down. Nice. OK. So look at that. It overshoots, but then rests. Um, let's increase our tension. And now we'll see a little bit more stiffness in it, but we see still no like bounciness. It's not like it's, you know, like a feather um, bouncing on anything like that. We've got this effect. So, OK, kind of interesting. Let's drop our start velocity back down. Let's, uh, what do we have here? So we have a nice slow one. Let's increase our mass. And look at that. Now we have some bounciness happening with a much heavier item. The amount of tension there finally being manifest because it's heavy enough to kind of overswing. Can drop the friction and get a little bit more bounce. We can increase the friction and get less bounce. Ooh, look at that one. Ooh, that was really soft and nice. Very soft and subtle. That's a cool set of parameters right there. So anyway, this is what I built today, and I can't wait to show you how I built it. But you know what we need to do next is go make sure this works in all the other browsers. Let's head over to the debugging corner. Ah, the debugging corner. Love it here. This is so much fun. And I love how these uh, sliders turned out over here on iOS. They look so nice. This is really nice default slider. And then I used accent color to give them all a different color, and they just... I don't know, it feels so happy and candy coated. And I don't know, I thought they did a really nice job on this uh, UI. Um, okay, so here it is working on all these different, whoa. Oh yeah, I mean, look at the mass. It's got a large amount of mass, uh, high tension, high friction. That should change it though. Oh, let's change the tension down. Ooh, oh, start velocity. That's the one kicking us right there. Ah, that's nice, much softer. That is good stuff. OK, so here it is working in iOS. And again, the reason this is going to work across all these browsers is because it's just a number being incremented in a custom property over time. So it doesn't have to do any interpolation. It doesn't have to do any animation. We've done it all ourselves. We're writing a new value for this over time. There it is going back and forth over here on iOS. Here's Android. I don't know why that first click seems to be kind of snapping to the other side sometimes. Look at that. It's pretty consistent. So I've got a bug in the way that I'm doing it. Well, whatever. We still get to see the nice demo here. Excellent. Firefox. Everything loves custom properties. How cool are those? All right. Another thing I wanted to show in here is that I forgot to show um, keyboard work. So look, I'm hitting tab. I can move through these, which is kind of fun. And if I hold tab, brrr, yeah. I don't know. I thought that was kind of fun and silly. But it's just interesting that you can tab through these and hit Enter to kind of invoke the different animations that they offer. Kind of cool. Oh, look at that one. Ooh, we have a bouncy outline. Interesting. Pretty cool, right? That one's going to shift and shuffle. Love it. Cool. So now that we've kind of seen the demo, we've seen a lot of like the effects it can have. We can see it working across all these different browsers. Let me break down a little bit of what it takes to code this up so that you can take it home and put some physics on whatever you want with custom properties. All right, up here is the HTML. So this first one was just an H1. There's the initial set of text, and it's got the class of how it works. And interactive makes it so that you get some um, nice interactions with a mouse and a keyboard. But the interesting part here is it's just text. So if we look at the JavaScript down here, this is the how it works JS module. It's going to import my Spring Physics um, function from this kind of class that I've created here. It also brings in bling bling JS just because I'm going to do a bunch of ad event listeners and stuff and it makes it easy. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab that particular item, how it works. I have it now in title. So this is going to be an element node. And I'll say title.physics. So I'm going to add the physics property onto the um, element object itself here. I'm going to say start at 10, which is going to match the text value that was inside of the element. And then I'm going to get a callback from Spring Physics. And it says, on update, here's your new value. Set the title.text content into the value value.to fixed. When you're doing a lot of these physics items, there's a lot of float values that come in. And so you can say to fixed, just sort of chop them right off. Because at this particular instance of like, I just wanted to show the number going up and down. I wasn't interested in its like fidelity of you know preciseness. Uh, I just wanted to see a number kind of overshoot and undershoot. And that sets up the physics. What you need to do next is set that value to something. You need to tell the physics start value to go to somewhere new. And it will take, so notice I didn't pass in any options here. I just used the default values that are in the Spring Physics class. But anyway, I hit a pointer up or key up. I'm going to set physics to 10. So that's going to kind of restore it. But when I push down or hit key down, I'm going to set the physics to 100. And that's it. You just set physics.2. You send it to a new value. It's going to call your callback. And I just set the text into that particular element to, to that value that I get back from this resolver. So uh, let's go check out the resolver a little bit. 
um, here's my index.js with all my different demos. Here's all my different styles going into different layers. Well, they're all going into the same demo example layer, but I just thought that looked kind of neat to have that organization. And here is the Spring Physics module. So this is if you want to get into the, like, the inner workings of how I achieved this physics, this is what I did. So here's the defaults. We have a namespace for the custom property that's going to be written. You can, of course, pass something custom here if you like. There's mass, tension, friction, and start velocity. We saw these already. And here's their defaults, 1, 100, 10, and 0. Here is the class. So notice I'm exporting a class called Spring Physics. Its constructor is going to take a start value, some options, and an update. We were just looking at that. We started at 10. We got an update function. And we didn't pass any options. We just accepted the defaults. So kind of cool. The next thing that this does is we call two, right? And that's what kind of kicks off everything. And notice this one's not private. So this is a public function. Tick and resolver are private. Got to love the little private members here. And we say two. So when we go two, let's expand this. We look to see if there's a current value. And if there is a current value, we set the start value to that tick value. And that's what allows us to resume and begin somewhere new. If you're in the middle of a previous spring animation, this will interrupt it, take its current value, and go to the new location. We have the target. We have the solver. And this is what does the work that sort of takes that 10 and goes to 100 and sort of bounces it back and forth. This is a lot of the physics is involved in this solver. And then we have a marker that says this is in motion. We have a start time indicator. And we have window.request animation frame this.tick.bind this. So we're going to tick. Uh, and stay inside of this class so that we can reference the values that have been instantiated inside of it with the, this keyword. So cool, that's how two works. Let's look at tick. So this happens on request animation frame over and over and over again until the animation's done. We look to see if this is in motion. We return if it is not in motion so that we don't want to be ticking if there's nothing to be displayed. We look at it, how much time has elapsed. So we take date.now divided by 1,000, and then we subtract this.startTime. And then we have the change that's happening. And so we pass that amount of time that's gone over to that solver. And that solver will resolve um, that particular value for us. Then we look at this.tick.value. So we look at the start value. And we add the target and minus this.start times the amount of change. And we get our new value. And then we can call the callback. So this.callback, we're going to call it back with the namespace and pass it the value that we've determined from the solver. And here's where we kind of determine if we need to finish or not. So if the elapsed amount of time is less than 5, or the change is currently equal to 1, which usually means it's done, um, well, see, if it's not equal to 1, then we continue requesting animation frame. We continue letting this tick. Otherwise, we set motion into false, and we cancel the animation frame. So that's what's happening in tick. And the last part of this is the solver, which I did not write. I got it from webkit.org slash demo slash spring slash spring.js. This was made a while ago. And it was a prototype made by the WebKit team. And it's just a function that kind of takes in these different masses, so well, different physics properties, mass, tension, friction, start velocity, and does the math in the equations to work out what that would be over time. And we return a function here called t, which is our solver. And we can pass that in and get back new values. I did not write this function as it kind of looks. And I referenced that it came from webkit.org. I just made a class out of it and hooked it up to request animation frame and then passed it back into these callbacks, like over here, so that I can use it to set a custom property. Well, this one sets text context. Let's look at one that is setting a custom property. Let's check out letter spacing. So here's the letter spacing styles. I just give it a font size so it's nice and big and easy for us to read. And then I set the letter spacing to var letter spacing, which is going to be set by um, our, our callback, and then a default value of 18 pixels. So if I look at the JavaScript, we're importing Spring Physics. We bring in bling bling. We grab our particular title element from the letter spacing. We're going to give it some physics, and we're going to say start at 3. So the letter spacing is 3 by default. We're going to give it some options. And here's a namespace called font size. We decreased the friction, and that's what made it so springy. And it sat there and sprung forever. It's because we reduced the amount of friction. Then we have our update functions. going to take that namespace and a value. And we're going to set a style property on the style object. This is how you set a custom property. Set that custom property called letter spacing to well, value times 6 plus pixels. So we turn the number into pixels here uh, so that we can use it in letter spacing. And then here's our key values. So when we release our finger, we're going to put it back to our starting value. And when we press, we're going to set it down to 5. And that's how the letter spacing works. Let's look at the border radius. Border radius, we grab our border radius element. We start a new physics item. 
We start at 25, give it some namespace. Here's the friction. We set that custom property to that namespace with the value with percentage. So kind of interesting. So 25% is the default, and then we animate to 45%. And the reason I didn't choose 50% is because you can't really overshoot border radius. It just turns into a circle at that point. And so I gave it something a little smaller so we could see it sort of overshoot into a perfect circle, but kind of settle. Um, if you hold the button down there, it won't settle at a circle. Anyway, just, that's just what I did. But you can see how this pattern is kind of playing out. Here's width. So we set width. Here's a less friction. This again, remember that one's really springy, really bouncy. We set the um, custom property to that namespace, which is width with the value. And if we look over here at width, we have an inline size set to var width or 300 pixels by default. And that's it. I used that particular pattern over and over and over again to make all those different demos and it just ended up being super duper fun. I hope you liked this GUI challenge. I had a ton of fun making it. Look at all these little fun, playful little demos. Uh, now I can go use this particular um, class, this spring physics class to go just put physics on anything and then use custom properties to have it go somewhere uh, into the browser and do something fun like rotate things, uh, make things bouncy. Boing, 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 boing. Oh, and a little zoom action. Yeah, and then we'll here, we'll spring this one back and forth. Anyway, I hope you had as much fun as I did watching this, as I did making it, or you had much fun or watching it as I did make it. You know what I mean. Anyway, keep your eyes out for more gooey challenges, and I'll see you on the next one. Happy holidays, y'all.